the thing that you guys need to understand is the scale of these events. Um, this is, Katrina was, was basically going from Texas to Florida, right? One, one storm, one discrete, a concentrated storm system. It, these things are increasingly larger and larger. So that was one of the big stories with Hurricane Katrina. But let's talk about in general about hurricane, uh, how hurricanes, how we get hurricanes in the first place. We basically need a, a specific set of recipes uh, or have to follow a specific set of steps in a recipe to get a hurricane in the first place. The first thing we need is fuel. So we need uh, the, the energy that's going to be converted into this spinning crazy tempest that, that then is going to go around and have the impacts that, that we are concerned with. And so that is, uh, first and foremost, the temp surface temperature of the ocean. Oftentimes it will be abbreviated as SST for sea surface temperature. And this is really the temperature in the top meter of, of the ocean. We recognize that the ocean is a, is a three-dimensional structure. It goes down, uh, on average, more than three kilometers deep. But we're really talking about the surface phenomenon. Normally, for a lot of our conversations about marine management and this and that, only looking at the surface is kind of problematic because we miss what's down below. We miss the full story. In the context of hurricanes, um, our satellites and our remote sensing things that just look at the surface, those are actually really, really good measures, really accurate measures to give us a picture of the environmental conditions that will then in turn uh, play into um, influencing uh, the, a hurricane or potential hurricane. Uh, then we need something that is, is in a sense, uh, a fireplace. So we're trying to start a fire. If we try to start a fire out in the open field, we can do it, but it's a little bit harder. It's a little bit easier if we started in a little chimney, in a little, little you know, clay, clay oven type thing that um, will, will allow the, the heat to be concentrated in that first little critical starting phase of the fire. Um, uh, high up, we can have even more fuel that'll, that'll help with the, uh, the goings on. Then, as you guys saw the other day when we were looking at that global scale picture, um, hurricanes, cyclonic storms do not form uh, right at the equator. We have to be a bit farther away, and that has to do with the Coriolis ef uh, effect or co effective force. Um, and we'll, we'll touch on that uh, a bit later. But suffice it to say, it has to just it can't be right at the equator. We then need some type of spark. And this is something we don't really, un this is probably the part that we least understand. What is that initial spark? What is the initial um, trigger or initial match, if you will, that's gonna get the, the whole system going? And then lastly, we need to have uh, the, the air conditions such that, again, in, especially in that, those early phases as it's spinning up, that it's not super windy and doesn't break down the spinningness of this phenomenon. So in other words, we need not that much shear, not that much crosswind. Okay. So I'm, I'm illustrating how hurricanes work by using the Katrina example, but this really applies to a lot of different, you know, hurricanes in general, but I just think it's nice to have a concrete example to talk about them, and it's one that we've, we've worked on a fair amount. Uh, so let's talk about 2005, which was the year that uh, August 29th, 2005 was when Katrina made landfall. So we're talking about the, the season up to, to, to leading into the summer of 2005. First and foremost, regardless of what was going on in 2005, just in the big picture, we are in this relatively active period of storm formation, hurricane formation. And we've been in this, this general um, hurricane friendly condition for a couple decades, since about the mid 90s. The, uh, at least up to 2005, because this is the, we're doing an example here in 2005, up to that point, the only exceptions we really had were El Nino years. El Nino conditions in the Pacific that then have ramifications across the globe, but basically aberrant years. So if we weren't in a weird year, we were, we were in really good um, hurricane forming condition uh, environments, both in the Pacific and the Atlantic. 2005, we had really warm water, sea surface temperature, really warm water in the Atlantic. And then we had favorable atmospheric conditions that would help again with the, especially the cyclogenesis, the starting phase of the hurricane. 
So in 2005, so what we do every year, we have, we have two basic, well, there are more, but we have two main estimators of what, predictors of what's going to happen. We have the National Hurricane Center, um, and that's based in, in Miami and Florida. And then we have um, the, this other group in Colorado. So they each issue their, their independent estimates, and they're usually fairly close to each other. But this happens in the spring. This happens typically around May. And they say, ah, given all our atmospheric modeling, given the conditions we've been seeing now, this is what we think is going to happen later in the summer in the, in the, in the peak time for these types of storms. So they, they, they give their estimates. And in that, that uh, spring of 2005, everybody was sounding the alarm bells. They were screaming, this is going to be a crazy season. I'll show you some data in a second. But they're basically saying, this is not just in the vague normal area. This is, and not just in the crazy era, this is beyond craziness. So in, in the phrasing of uh, the storm predictor guys, it was 175% probability of being above hyperactive. So that, that was uh, freaking out. Uh, by, by comparison, just to give you guys a sense for this year, this past May, NOAA's predictions were for an above normal season, but nothing, nothing as, as we're, I mean, they were definitely worried, but not as worried as they were in 2005 leading into the season. Now we think of, uh, so how we, now, so I have the columns here. It says tropical storms on the left, hurricanes, major hurricanes. These are all the same phenomenon. It's just more intense. As we go to the right, those are stronger systems, okay? But the physics of it, the storm phenomenon, it's all the same thing. It's just, it's just how, how big a storm does it get? Tropical, uh, we, have, we start with a tropical depression, and then we get to a, an official cyc cyclone, tropical storm. It's the first level. And then if it keeps getting more and more tense, it, it would transition to a hurricane category. And if that uh, continued to strengthen, it would become a so-called major hurricane. Cool? Everybody with me on that? So let's look at the top. Or, or Yeah. So, okay. So here is... Here, now this, is, this data, again, this is relative to 2005. So this is the conditions going into 2005. So for, in this case, we're using the baseline conditions of essentially the previous five decades. And so the idea is how, and so what, what, what these predictors do is they say, hey, you guys, you should exp expect X number of tropical storms, X number of hurricanes, et cetera. This is refer, and okay, so in this case, we're talking about the North Atlantic. So from the equator up, and these storms don't necessarily make it to the U.S. mainland. This is just how many, how many storms will be formed uh, in that area. So some cases they'll be, they'll be formed and they'll make some landfall somewhere. In other cases, they'll just do their due, spin around, and then they'll dissipate at some point, never touching uh, an island or a continent. All right, so for a, a, this line here is the overall everything combined. Um, and then here we're breaking it up into these different categories of below normal, near normal, you know, these weather guys, man, they have all these funky terms, right? But, but you can consider near normal is, is sort, of, sort of like an average and then above normal, okay? And so here they get, the things are always given in a range. So the idea is uh, in a near normal season, we should expect in a regular old year, somewhere between six and 14 tropical storms, somewhere between four and eight hurricanes, and somewhere between one to three uh, major hurricanes, really strong winded phenomenon. And then, and then you can see for comparison, I put in what the, what the above normal, what an above normal season would be. Let's call it two to eight major hurricanes. And then a below normal, which would be none to maybe two uh, over, over the course of the summer into fall. And if we take all, and, oh, okay, sorry, then again, and then for the tropical storms, uh, so as you can see here, tropical storms are always more common. It's easier to get a tropical storm. It's harder for those guys to progress to be more intense. So we always have fewer hurricanes than we have tropical storms and fewer major hurricanes than we have of hurricanes. Everybody with me? Cool. Okay. So again, going into the two, going into in May of 2005, these are what the predictions were for later on in the 2005 season. 18 to 21 tropical storms. That's crazy. 9 to 11 hurricanes. 5 to 7 major hurricanes. That is, that is huge. That is crazy. To give you a sense, now we're not done with 2017, so I can't give you the, the numbers yet, but at least for, for, so you guys have some idea of how to gauge what's been going on right now. If you look at 
this this May's prediction. This is this, this is a NOAA's prediction. Um, their guess they predicted somewhere from 11 to 17 tropical storms. So similar to that 2005, right? Above hyper, above above normal. Um, excuse me, above above normal is what I should say. Um, and then a hurricanes five to nine, which is a bit more in the <laughs> above normal range, and major hurricanes in the above normal range. Steve. Uh, how how far in advance do they do the predictions? In May. So, and, and then there'll be an August update. So if you guys go look, so, so the data I'm showing you here are all from the May, the May estimates. So before we have any data. This is what actually happened in 2005. We had 28 tropical storms. We had 15 hurricanes and we had seven major hurricanes. Crazy, 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 crazy. So this is all to tell you that, that 2005 was an unusual year. And we'll see how many uh, hurricanes stuff we end up with uh, after another month or so when, when we exit the season. Okay, let's, let's look. Any questions about that? Sorry, I jumped. That's a lot of numbers up there. Any questions about that? Makes sense? So we, we have a range and then there's some kind of average score there to, get, to give planners, uh, emergency preparedness personnel, all those kind of folks, some idea of what to expect. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. So, yeah. So, what I've done here is the, the orange is what actually happened. So, the predictions are in the beige. So, this is May. So, in May, we thought, oh, there's going to be somewhere between 18 and 21. Turned out we had more than that. We had a total of 28. We thought there would be somewhere between 9 to 11 hurricanes. Turned out there was 15. We thought there would be somewhere between 5 to 7. There ended up being 7 hurricanes at the end of the season. Cool? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. So these are all. So these are all the same thing. It's just. It's just. What was the maximum wind speed that that particular storm experienced? So everything will start. All. All three of these things will start off as a tropical storm. So every single one of these, at some point in their, their storm lifespan, were a tropical storm. The, the ones that. So the twenty-eight that say tropical storms, they just were tropical storms, and then they dissipated. Um, an additional fifteen. Uh, actually got stronger than tropical storm category. We'll talk about winds in a second. But, but the, the most common scale that you guys are used to, the, the one category one through five, that's a measure of wind speed. So at some point, at some point uh, uh, 15 of these, the winds got, got really fast. And so then they qualified as a hurricane, even for just an hour. And then, and then either they just dissipated or they dropped back down to tropical storm or what have you. In addition to that, another seven started off as hurricanes and they actually got even faster. And so, so the total number of cyclonic storms here is 28 plus 15 plus seven for the year. You guys with me? Does that make sense? Okay. Other questions? Yeah. So if it went from a hurricane back down to a tropical storm, would that be kind of twice? No. No, 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 no. So, 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 so in, this in this tabulation, it's only the maximum. So, so in theory, it could go tropical storm, it could go hurricane, it could go back to tropical storm, it could strengthen again back to hurricane. But, but it would only count as, you know, in the accounting of that, we would count that as one hurricane. So these are discrete storm phenomena, discrete packages. So this, this, in other words, there's a lot of storms going on here. Cool? Do you know what we're currently at this year? Uh, I, I don't know the total number. I think we're up to four major hurricanes so far this year. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I don't remember as of yesterday. But we can easily find out. I can find out when we break. Cool? Okay, so this, again, this is the context, just so you guys are understanding what hurricanes are. Okay, so let, let's look at these, these formation conditions, again, using the example of 2005. So what we're looking at here is... Uh, the satellite derived temperature data for the the very top top of the ocean waters okay and and the color is uh, representing a uh, heat on this on this upper graph this is uh, degrees in um, uh, Celsius okay so this is how, how hot is it down here this is anomalies so this is deviation from what we would normally expect on a quote unquote typical year. So deviation from the background condition or, or, the, or the, excuse me, the expected condition. And so in this case, uh, this, is, this is 
the lightish light color here, this this blue color, means this is what we'd expect. This is this is the water we've we've come to. This is the the temperature, excuse me, of the water we've come to expect. And as it gets hotter, it's not only is it hot, it's aberrantly hot. You guys with me? And if we have a look right here, um, again, here's that band wherein uh, hurricanes cannot form. So between these two little black lines I have on here, that you're not gonna we can't get stuff here. So this is where we're talking about, the North Atlantic over here. Now check it out. Here, uh, and typically we see these, these systems beginning off of Africa or off, off the Saharan dust clouds and stuff, and, and they tend to go, or they tend to move towards North America. Okay, and again, you see I saw that the other day when I showed you that, that figure. But uh, as we come close, check it out. We're getting, or it's, you know, whatever, warm water. Ooh, it's warmer. Ooh, it's warmer. Ooh, it's crazy. Muy caliente. Right. So so as we're getting closer to the places that we're mo most concerned about our wetlands, our cities, that kind of stuff, it's potentially more and more fuel. It's potentially more and more stoking that fire. Cool. Make sense. OK. And this is and, and Katrina made landfall on August 29th, just for reference. So this is the condition just in the immediate in the days leading up as it's starting to come on in. Uh, another key one we mentioned is uh, how the winds are, are blowing and again if you think about a hurricane it's a spinning it, it, it's a it's a cyclone it's a spinning phenomenon if we had something that kind of you know blew on broke messed up that that spinning this just like if you guys are in the bathtub and the water's going down and you take your finger and you spin around the drain you take your finger out you can make it you know make that big that big sucking cyclone type thing and so it's there, but then if you splash with your foot or your leg or whatever, you can break it. Then the water's still going in the drain, but it doesn't have that, that cool sort of tornado-like effect. So the idea here is um, aberrantly low. So again, in this case, the hotness isn't, isn't um, more intense. In this case, with this representation, this is less intense. So this is less sheer. In other words, the atmosphere is stiller than it otherwise would be. Cool? Again, right in this area as we're, as we're heading into the Caribbean, as we're heading into the Gulf of Mexico. If we had regular windier conditions, that might have dissipated the hurricane or might help to keep it only a tropical storm or, or whatever the case is. Okay, so this is an animation of all of these storms um, in 2005. So we're going to start, we're going to start or, or many of them. So here we go. So we start with the naming convention of these guys begins with the letter A. Here in, North Amer here in the Americas, some of these storms hit Central America, South America. Well, not South America, but Central America, right? Spanish speaking. Okay, so here we're looking at the, the sea surface temperature, right? And then we're going to overlay these storms. Now, how we do the naming convention, we, we, we have an a international group. We get together. And one year we do Spanish names, the next year we do English names. Next year Spanish names, next year English names, etc. So we have a list, and that's how we get these. They're, they aren't named by the storm, we just go to the next one in the list. That's how we get them. So here we go. So, so, we're, we're, uh, so here we've added on atmospheric clouds now. And we're going to start to see these storms spin up, starting with Arlene. There we go. There's Arlene, the first one. Boom. And this is the storm track. And, and there, it's going to lessen when it gets over land. Okay, so there's A. Heading into June. Okay, there we go. There's boom hit uh, Mexico mainland. And then now we're in July. Here comes Cindy. Boom, up there. Uh, the numbers are the uh, hurricane force, or the category of hurricane it is. So category four, category three, category two, when it's a hurricane. Otherwise, it's just a tropical storm. There's Emily. Look, Emily caused problems. Okay, so look, now we're getting to July. L look, look at the frequency at which we're seeing these storms, right? And also note that they're, they're tracking with, this, with the hot water, right? The warm water. So Harvey was not a major storm, so we, we recycled the name. After this year, Harvey's, the name will be retired. There'll never be another hurricane called Harvey. For major problem hurricanes, we retire the name. So remember, there's, there's all these kind of atmospheric winds that are helping nudge it. Here comes Katrina. 
boom, over the Florida. It first makes landfall in Florida, then it comes up, it becomes a category five, boom. By the time it hits land, it's only category three. This is still only September, we're still going. Boom, 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 right? Ophelia comes in, uh, brushes along the um, Carolinas. Here comes Rita. Rita's going to go up the eastern side of Louisiana and Texas border. Boom, that was, that was three weeks after Katrina. Another huge problem. More flooding was generated by Rita in Louisiana. Here comes Stan. Okay, now here comes the interesting part. We use an alphabet that goes from A to Z. Right now we're at V already, and it's, only, it's still October. Here comes Wilma. And we run out of names. This has never happened in the history of, of doing this for over you know, decades and decades. So now we started calling them Alpha Hurricane, Beta Hurricane, right? Because we, did, we, we never thought we'd ever in a million years need something more than the, the uh, let the the list of you know 20 or so names here we keep going here comes gamma in a sec there's gamma and then delta comes out way far out heads up towards Europe here comes epsilon and then all the way through in December December, we have uh, Zeta kick in. Well, somewhere. So uh, a very unusual year, a, a hy beyond hyperactive uh, year, right? A, a year for the time for the record books. There's Zeta, boom, right there at the very end. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Cool? Okay, we'll watch Zeta go away, then we'll kill it. Okay, bye Zeta. We use uh, the, the standard thing that you guys all see in the news and you hear about is the hurricane category. Okay, so, so not tropical storm. So the tropical storm has the name, whatever it is, Harvey or whatever. And if it becomes a hurricane or a super hurricane, it keeps the same name. It's just we refer to it as as a hurricane or super hurricane. Again, same exact phenomenon, just the amount of intensity. So the, the, the common uh, categorization that we use was invented by guys that were working for the Red Cross. And they were working, so okay, this is what happens typically, international disaster, a disaster happens, boom, we send in these folks, and it's, it's, it varies where we are, but oftentimes it's a group like the American Red Cross. They won't first go in to help people, I mean, they'll send rescue crews, but they'll, they'll, in addition to the people going in trying to pull the folks out of the buildings and give them water, there's going to be disaster response crews. And these are usually kind of engineering, consultancy type people. And they're going to go in and they're going to do a needs assessment. They're, they're going to cruise the area and they're going to say, hey, does the water system work? Does the sewage system work? You know, how many buildings are damaged? You know, quick, quick overview. So they can then report to the agencies that, oh my gosh, we're going to need a gazillion million tents. Or, oh my gosh, we're going to need a lot of plywood or, or whatever, you know, they can begin to plan for it, right? So a couple of these guys um, were doing this and they were noticing that, um, that they needed a better way to get a handle on the potential impact of a storm, okay? And so they were looking at various things. And again, this was, this was done in, in Central America. And a lot of these houses were, were um, not robustly constructed. And so they, they started noticing roof damage and stuff like this was a common phenomenon. So they said, hey, let's base the, let's give an estimate essentially for their disaster planning purposes. So before the hurricane makes landfall, hey, you know, what should we at least vaguely begin to prep for? And so they came up with this scale based on wind speed. So a category one has peak winds. Uh, so there's peak winds and then there's sustained winds. Um, and so these guys, so winds on the order of 74 to 95 miles per hour, again, miles per hour, not kilometers, but whatever, uh, category one. And so, so the cutoff between whether something is a tropical storm or a hurricane is if the winds get uh, above 73 miles per hour. If it hits 74, then it's a hurricane. 
And then as we go up, there's just these different categories, right? Category two, category three, category four, category five. Category five is 157 mile per hour winds. And that's crazy, right? In theory, we could have category six, category seven, category eight. And people have started to ask about that in this era of climate change and, and more intense storm stuff. Maybe we need other scales. These guys answer is no. Five is going to destroy pretty much everything. So in the context that they invented the scale, they've argued they don't need to go up to category six or whatever. By the time you're hit, this is happening, if you're out in the wind and stuff, you're going to die. Right. Or, you, or, or, or that, little, that little chunk of wood that broke off that tree will go through your skull kind of thing, right? I mean, it's, it's just it's, it's insanely dangerous. So in the context of this was invented, we don't need to go above five. Um, right, and then you can see here what, what, what their categorization of one through five translates into. Category one is very dangerous winds, will produce some damage. Category two, extremely dangerous winds, extensive damage. Category three, ex you know, devastating damage. Four, catastrophic. And then five, pretty much you get just, you know, don't move, don't do anything. This is maybe another way to think of <laughs> our wind categories, right? So that's really what we're talking about. And clearly, you know, we don't, don't want to don't knock on category one through five. It clearly has its value, clearly has its use. It tells us if we're having a really intense storm or a less intense storm. But in and of itself, it's only using wind speed. And what we began to discover, I mean, meteorologists have sort of known this for a while, but what really became apparent was with Katrina that um, this, this whole notion of wind speed, that, wasn't, that was only part of the picture. And so this is both a, a funny thing, cats, you know, memes, cats, whatever. But, but um, it also serves the point that this is only talking about the movement of air. A new, a new index is coming up. Now, officially, it's, it's not an official index. It's still a research project at this point. So the National Weather Service, National Hurricane Center, they do not, uh, they do not tell us official numbers. I, I emailed the guy that created this. A couple days ago, saying I was going to talk to you guys about hurricanes. Can you give me the most recent numbers for Harvey and and uh, and Irma and stuff? And, and he's probably totally inundated with calls from the media, so he, he hasn't gotten back to us yet. But but um, there is no database we can go look this up. But here's the idea: the idea is not to just look at the at the wind speed, but also look at the size of the event. So let's have a look. So Andrew, which was the the last major hurricane to make landfall in Florida before Irma did this week. Andrew's coming, this is 1992. Look at the size, knowing nothing else, just looking at the scale. So this is a, this is a, um, a uh, photoshopped image here. So, so these guys took uh, the 1992 image and they went and they grabbed our 2017 image and overlaid it on there just, just so you can see the scale. But have a look. Irma is like twice the size, it's, it's a diameter, about twice the diameter of Andrew. So this cyclone damage potential index, CDP, looks at wind speed, of course, you know, how intense is it blowing, but it's also looking at, at how big it is. So we can imagine a really, really intense storm that's relatively small, and that's going to be a total problem for the places it hits, but pretty much those places that it hits. Versus we could imagine a hurricane that might not have quite as strong winds, but could be much, much bigger. And the overall damage potential could be much greater. The impact on coastal wetlands, the impact on coastal infrastructure, the impact on, on urbanized environments, all that kind of stuff. So this new index, the cyclone damage potential, um, is, is a new and up and coming measure. And it probably will never completely supplant the one through five because the one through five is basically, are you going to die or not, right, if it comes over you? So there's value in that. But for more of our purposes, the planning purposes, the emergency response, the FEMA type of folks, the CDP is probably going to be a more useful metric. Um, and, and one, we can talk about how big it is and the winds, but we can also talk about potential rainfall, right? So one of the things with Harvey was it was problematic in and of itself, but it also was moving very slowly. So it parked over, it parked over um, uh, Texas and Houston and just dumped. And so 
for comparison here, uh, this is from this weekend, uh, there's the amount of rain that was dumped from Katrina in 2005. Six point, and this, these numbers are hard. We don't, it's hard. What the hell is 6.5 trillion gallons of like, right? It's hard to envision. But the point is, compared to Harvey, check it out. Katrina, major damage. You guys, you know, we'll talk about in a second some of the damage that Katrina did and all this and that. But hugely impactful. But Harvey, if we're just talking rainfall, orders of mag, you know, crazy more rainfall. So all that stuff can be sucked into the so-called cyclone damage potential. And that's, again, that's probably going to be a more useful indicator for, for the technical folks for looking at what these hurricanes are doing. Cool? Questions? OK, one more video, and then we'll take a pause for a second here. OK, so th this is a relative measure. These are some, this is a storm from 2008. Right? So again, these storms are, are not all, another, the point here is these storms are not all created equal. Here's a 2016 storm, mid-90s storm. They seem big, and they are but they keep getting bigger. So this is Jose right now. Harvey, two weeks ago. Luis right now, or just, or actually no, it's the old Luis. Irma just this weekend. Yeah, that's a great question. So here, here's uh, what people called Superstorm Standy. It was actually a hurricane, but people use the moniker Superstorm, so everybody uses it. And then, and then, so we're about to crash into Saturn with Cassini. Oh, and there's a storm on Saturn. Just, just to be super nerding out on you guys. Okay, there you go. <laughs> 